First up, an inventor from the West who's got no interest in swimming with sharks. My name's Dave Smith. I'm 46. I'm from Perth, WA. I'm a surfer, I'm a business owner, a dad, and everything I do is for my family. I've got two beautiful kids, Jake is eight, and Charlie's 14. Uh, I've had them down at the beach since before they could walk. I want my kids to be passionate about surfing, and I want them to be safe. The 63-year-old split from her swimming group, and that's when the shark attacked. The beach was closed immediately after the terrifying encounter. Locals have told us there's been a big, great white menacing surfers and divers here. It's the second shark attack off the West Australian coast in less than two weeks. With all the shark attacks in WA over the past few years, I thought somebody needed to actually do something. My product's about uh, giving people safety and it's been a personal crusade to me to give confidence back to surfers. I'm passionate about my product and I think it's what the community really wants. I'm very confident these guys are going to take up this proposal. My name's Dave Smith. I'm from Western Australia. My company's called SurfSafe and my offer is 5% for $120,000. My product is designed after a spate of fatal shark attacks across Australia and the Indian Ocean. And what I came up with was a product that's built into a surfboard to deter shark attacks. There is an electrode on the front of the surfboard and an, a rear electrode in the back of the board. This puts out an electromagnetic field, three metres around the board, a six metre diameter. We've tested this and it deters shark attacks. We tested it with bull sharks, tiger sharks, and finally we got to test it with white sharks. So what we did was put the surfboard in the water, we put we a number of baits on the underside of the board, we had the sharks come in, we let them take the bait, so the sharks were confident in the surfboard and taking the bait. With the device activated, the sharks wouldn't take the bait. Come on, look, mate. Why don't they go near it? The electromagnetic field affects the receptors in the nose of the shark, so it's like pretty much getting a punch in the nose from any of the sharks that come within three metres of the board. Dave, is it out there in the market already, or is this a new prototype? We put this product out nearly 12 months ago. Currently, we're selling it in Australia and New Zealand. And what do you say? What was the last...? Uh, the sales in the last three months have been $47,000. And what, what about the month one, month two, month three? Uh, they've increased. They've been increasing like by around 25 to 30% each month. And how are you selling it? Present, they just buy it online. It's still a manufacturing level and we will be working on getting that into a retail product. What's the, what's, what's the size of your market? How many surfers are there in the world, mate? Uh, I'm, just, I'm dealing with the WA market at present. It's, it's around 30,000 regular surfers in the water. Worldwide, there's just under one million surfers. So what does it cost you to manufacture these? We've just been working with an Australian company, so they've been around the $150 mark. Uh, we wholesale it for $300. So at your $150, bucks, and so you make, you have 100% markup into the wholesale space, $300? Yeah, that's right. Excellent. And then what do they retail? You have a website and they retail for They something? retail for $389. Plus fitting. 389 plus fitting, yeah, so they come in at, at around 469. What's a surfboard cost? Yeah, average surfboards cost around 600 Australian dollars. Okay, so this is going to add the cost of That's a surfboard. Right, yeah. You're a bit of a surfer, aren't you? I'm a very poor surfer, but I do love it. And you don't like getting bitten? No, funnily enough, I like to be on top of the food chain. I do yeah. like to be number one. Yeah. Um, my whole family is a surfing family, and we've got quivers, which is a new word I just discovered. It's a group of surfboards. Like arrows? Yes, it's like a flock of birds, but it's a quiver of surfboards. You're saying the average person might have two or three boards if they're semi-serious? No, they would, but it's expensive. My quiver is ten boards, it's $4,000. We do have customers that come in and they, they are passionate about saving their lives and their families' lives. They are putting three in there, absolutely no hesitation. I've got customers that put six in there. We are working on a removable product and that will be in the future development. And this removable product, how much work, how much time, how much money is involved in that? 
The part of this 120,000 we need is for development in, the, in that removable product. This is, this is the one that the global surfers and the global community are after. Does the new one go on the board or on my wetsuit? Because I scuba dive as well. We are looking at uh, different ways to attach this to other products. The thing with me is that if you were standing here today and you had version two, which was, you know, when I scuba dive, I can wear it. Um, when my boys are going out with their wetsuit, it sort of sits in their, in their cap. I would be jumping on it like nobody's business. Please let me know when you have version two, but at the moment, I'm out. You got a valuation of 2.4 million on your business, haven't that's you? That's right, yeah. It's quite a big valuation for a business, obviously, that's starting out. Yeah. Um, how did you arrive at that number? Uh, look, we just sort of went on the potential market. We, we know the way the business has taken off. We only put it on the market three months ago, and it's taking off. So what are the, what are the forecasts, projections? What do you think is the size of the market that you can realistically achieve? We, we know that we can move 1,000 units in the next year. And with a, with a global strategy, especially into the US market, uh, we know that we can sell 50,000 units there in, within one year. Dave, I think uh, I'm in a position where I can make my mind up about this. When I look at your valuation and your estimate, you're going to sell a thousand. You're going to make a hundred thousand dollars gross profit if you're lucky in the first year. I just can't correlate the one hundred thousand dollars of sales to a valuation of, of two point four million. So, from an investment point of view, I'm out. Dave, I love your ingenuity. You are quintessential Australia, and I love it. But it is highly risky. I'm out. Dave, I, um, if I could give you some feedback. Your valuation is very optimistic again, very high. Um, your percentage is low. I was toying up whether to make an offer and increase the percentage, but you only want to sell a small portion of the business and you've got a fairly lofty valuation. And I don't see that my connections are really going to be that valuable to this business. So, I'm out. Thank you. Steve, where are you at? Um, uh, you know, you are actually a nice bloke. I'm not here for sympathy. No, but this isn't sympathy, man. I'm, I'm on the edge here. My biggest problem is I don't surf, so I don't fundamentally get it. And I'm sitting next to a surfer who's not going to invest. Your, your valuation is ludicrous. 2.4 million, mate, is such a large valuation for where you're at. If you're going to get 120 grand out of me, mate, it's going to be for something like 45%. So, Dave, how do you react to 120,000 for 40%? 45%. 45%. Yeah, Hang on, that's... is that the offer? Is that an offer? Yeah, it was an offer. It's an offer? Yeah, it is great. I'm glad to get an offer. So, where are you at? Perth entrepreneur Dave Smith's shark deterrent has already chased off four sharks. But then Steve Baxter put a toe in the water. If you're going to get 120 grand out of me, mate, it's going to be for something like 45%. Is that an offer? Yeah, it was an offer. It's an offer. So, yeah, it is great. I'm glad to get an offer. So where are you at? Well, I mean, I'm grateful for your offer. Uh, but just at present, I, I couldn't accept that. I appreciate it, but um, it's just, at present, that's just too much for me to offer uh, up. So, do you have a counter offer? Just uh, to prod and poke you into a negotiation here, can we? So, no, no, that, that um, so you're not even going to counter with some percentage, mate. You're just going to say, no, I think, you know, let's just not talk at all. Is that where you're at? Yeah. So, 5% is it, 5% or nothing, I'm going home. Absolutely. Well, mate, I just can't do that, right? 
So I'd, I'd love to, and I believe I can add value. Yeah. But I am out. OK. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for presenting. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks, All the best. Dave. Pleasure. Good luck. Thank See you. Later. Bye. I've spent two and a half years on it, and finally it's taking off, and there's no way that I can give it up at 45%. I was surprised at how stubborn he was on the valuation, because I think the value, we all agreed, yeah. the valuation was insane. I just hope he's going to come back at a 30 or 35, right? I, I still would have gone. Yeah. <laughs>